There are three primary reactions that occur in this reactor. A fission reaction, a chain reaction, and a transmutation reaction that produces plutonium. We'll start with the fission reaction. Early experiments determined that if you would slow down a neutron by bouncing it off of light atoms, you could produce a slow neutron, and a slow neutron would be accepted by the uranium-235 isotope. Uranium-235 isotope is less than 1% of natural uranium, 0.7%. But it's the magic atom. When the U-235 atom accepts the slow neutron, three important things happen. It breaks into two smaller atoms. It always breaks into two atoms, not necessarily the same pair. And these atoms are called fission products. The fission products are unstable and they kick out two to three neutrons with each reaction. Now the combined atomic weight of the two fission products is very slightly less than the atomic weight of uranium-235, which means that we have lost weight or mass. Einstein's theory says if you lose mass, you gain energy, and that's exactly what happens in the fission reaction. Energy is produced, in this case, as heat and gamma rays which are just like intense x-rays. Now, if we move from the fission reaction to the chain reaction, the chain reaction is the result of a number of fission reactions. When the uranium-235 releases three neutrons, for example, they in turn bounce off of the carbon atoms in the reactor and are slowed down until they intercept other uranium-235 atoms, and those atoms release two to three other neutrons, and so three neutrons become nine neutrons, become 27 neutrons, and it all happens in a flash. Speed and time are a little different in physics. A fast neutron travels at 45 million miles an hour. A slow neutron travels at 5,000 miles an hour. Speed is different in nuclear physics. Time is different. Physicists talk about time in tiny fractions of seconds, microseconds, which are like a millionth of a second, or nanoseconds, which are like a billionth of a second. So a lot of things happen very fast, in the, in the fission reaction and the resulting chain reaction. Now, why do we want all of these neutrons? In order to make the plutonium, we need a flood of neutrons because those neutrons, again, are slowed down by passing through the carbon atom. And when they intercept the uranium-238 isotope, which is most of natural uranium, the uranium-238 accepts the neutron, but it does not fission. Instead, it becomes a new isotope, uranium-239. The uranium-239 is not a happy isotope. It's unstable. And so in its attempt to become stable, it kicks out an electron. And it changes itself into a brand new man-made atom called neptunium. Neptunium is also not a happy element, and it kicks out an electron and changes itself or transmutates itself into the plutonium-239, which is what we're after in the first place. These reactions don't occur immediately. Physicists have a term they call half-life. The uranium-239, for example, changes over a period of 23 minutes, half of it changes into neptunium. The neptunium half-life is 2.3 days. Half-life means half of the uranium-239 changes to neptunium in 23 minutes, and then in the next 23 minutes, half of the remaining uranium-239 changes. So in a matter of a few minutes, all the uranium-239 has changed to neptunium. In a matter of a few days, 
all the neptunium is changed to plutonium. And plutonium is a very stable element. It sticks around for millions of years. However, plutonium has the unique characteristics that it too, under the right conditions, will fission. It fissions just like the uranium-235 atom, so it can be used in atomic weapons. So plutonium, as a weapons material, is able to be separated from the uranium because plutonium is different chemically than uranium. And so plutonium was a source of most of the weapons that were produced in this country, and they were the source of the first uh, atomic explosions.